But we have a really uh, very interesting topic for discussion tonight about the state income tax and that situation and what should be done and what our, our two guest speakers I think about that. We have two of our state representatives, Mike McCready, who represents this area here, the 40th State House District, which includes Bloomfield Township. And we're very uh, thankful, by the way, to the Bloomfield Township uh, people for letting us utilize the facility here, the Trustees Hall. And, and Mike will be speaking for about 10 minutes or so on it. And we'll also hear from Jim Runstead, but if you know from the 45th, 44th, rather, uh, the 44th District, uh, White Lake and surrounding areas. And so our, our goal is, is to have um, some interesting questions about the state income tax, uh, focusing on that and their thoughts on the, that topic. So that, that should be outstanding. House Bill 4001, which is our first House bill for the new legislative session, which would re reduce income tax from the current 4.25% to 3.9% over a four-year period. Once fully implemented, the rate reduction will result in a $1 billion loss of revenue to the general fund. Uh, the current general fund is approximately $10.1 uh, 10 billion. If we broke that down and into the medium family income for Michigan in 2015 was $54,084 based on the census of um, of a survey that was done at the time, it's called a a ACS1. Uh, that income tax would result in $3.43 per week more in an average median family at that $54,000. Having said that, uh, it would create some other issues that we would, that we would have to have dealt with. And um, I'll give you a couple of, in, uh, of situations that may have occurred that gave me alarm to vote against the tax cut is that we've had tax credits, the mega tax credits that were really passed out during the Grand Home Administration that get cashed in annually and we don't really have a schedule of when those are going to be cashed in. It's up to the holder of those tax credits to, to bring them in and cash them in. The other issue is uh, we did a um, road funding package remember last term, which uh, eventually by I think it's 2020 will account for $600 million out of our general fund that we have to appropriate for. As well as um, two terms ago we changed personal property tax on manufacturing companies. So if you have a manufacturing company uh, you were paying personal property tax on that equipment that, that revenue went to your local government and we transferred a lot of that over to the, to the state and the general fund. And that was approximately $350 million of money that would be coming out of the general fund. And then, so when you add that up, we're really talking close to a $2 billion um, responsibility of the general fund that we're not realizing yet, but we're starting to realize. And then take that into account with a tax reduction in revenue, right? Because we're going to go from 4.25 to 3.95. It's a billion dollars. So we actually could be looking by the year 2022 at somewhere between two billion and five billion dollar deficit in the general fund. So what concerned me the most about that is when you have uh, expenditures, you have debt, you have obligations, you have to be able to meet those obligations. And when the proposal of House Bill 4001 was presented, I think it really sounds good because we do want to see lower taxes, but knowing that we have all these obligations coming and we have this debt that we're financing, to make that cut at this time without showing any reductions in spending along with the tax cut is not necessarily a way to run the state government. And I think you're right, we could go ahead and just cut taxes and figure out later what the reductions in spending are going to be, but I think they have to be done at the same time. And that's the tricky part of serving in the legislature, is you have to have 56 votes in the House, you have to have 20 in the Senate, and then you have to have the governor willing to sign that bill. Now we did do a tax reduction plan in the uh, road funding package last term, and that was um, 
That was Senate Bill 414, which Wayne Schmidt from Traverse City sponsored. So we already had a tax, income tax reduction plan in place starting in 2023. And the in income tax would be lowered automatically with growth in the general fund and, and related to inflation. So we already had a program in place to lower the personal income tax if we saw growth in the general fund. But I'll remind you of the obligations that we placed on the general fund going forward up to the next three to five years was significant. <clears throat> and so I looked at the state of Kansas, I think it was, and it yeah. was Kansas or it was Kansas. Kansas, thank you, doctor. And a few, I think it was in 2013 they lowered their inc personal income tax. And that was what everybody called for. And they thought, great, this will stimulate our economy, this is a good thing. Well, unfortunately, it didn't work out as what they had thought it was going to work out. So they went back this last year, they not only had to raise their personal income tax from where it was in 2013, they had to go above that to make up for all the debts because they couldn't cut the spending that was required to meet that new revenue source. I didn't want to put us in that type of situation. I didn't feel that was responsible governing. And one thing that we had asked the speaker, and there was a gang of 12 as we're known for, is show us the cuts in the spending to go along with the cuts in the income tax and we'll vote for this. But they didn't show us any cuts in spending. And so we said, okay, well, and this is the gang of 12, we said, then if you can't show us those, we'll go find a reduction in spending and we'll agree to a reduction in one tenth of a point in the next six months and we went and showed reduction in the governor's 2017 state of the state address in his budget and we showed a 200 million dollar reduction along with a tenth of a point in reduction in state spending and we said we'll come back and revisit this in six or eight months to see if we can even find more. And that wasn't accepted. And so uh, that's where we ended up. And what I find a little bit um, unusual at this point, where we're nine months now into a new session, is if a, if a bill isn't moving or if a bill fails, you try and negotiate it going forward because you had two years in a leg legislative session to negotiate to get something done. I'm not aware of any of the 12 of us that have been approached to try and come back and readdress this situation. And yet we did offer a tax reduction, but we offered it with, tax, with spending cuts, but yet we haven't heard anything more about this. So um, I feel comfortable with the decision we made I feel like I didn't put the state in any uh, further um, debt or precarious spending situations or revenue situations going forward. I know some people refer to the law, I think it's the law for curve, if you reduce spending, if you reduce taxes, you'll increase spending. I don't disagree with that, but if you look at how we do our buckets of money in the state of Michigan, our general fund is basically um, corporate revenue and income tax revenue. Sales tax revenue is a different bucket that gets distributed in a different way. And I don't disagree that we could have increased spending. People might have increased spending through that process. But remember, those spending dollars and the tax revenue we get to them goes to a completely different so a spending source, mostly schools. Our general fund is, is some health and human services spending. It's uh, prisons. It's higher education. And I'll give you a, a couple other ones that, that we deal with. It is um, uh, corrections, higher education, and general government, which is your local governments and state police, your MSP. And what we don't want to end up doing is doing tax shifts. And I'll give you an example when I talk about tax shifts. Back in 2011, the legislature reduced spending on our universities by 15%. And what did that do? It increased tuition for parents and the students. 
and we're still making up for that. We still have out of our, was it 17 public universities, we still have five or six that are still below um, levels in the 2011 15% spending cut that we need to get up. So how do they make up for that? Well, they make up through, through higher tuition rates to the students or the parents who are paying the bill. And the last thing I want to do is do a tax shift so that you're paying it in another area. We didn't want to increase, increase your taxes in other areas. So as much as we wanted to and we offered to do a tax cut, it was not accepted. And unfortunately, it turned into more of a political football than it should have. I, think, uh, I don't think there should have been a rush to push this through. I think we have plenty of time since we just started a new legislative session to work on a, a tax reduction plan that was responsible, that not only showed a reduction in income tax, but also showed an acceptable cut in spending. Jim's Okay, sure. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Jim Runstead. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Jim. Well, thank you for uh, the opportunity to be here. Uh, I think uh, the different forums that I've been at, I find that kind of the give and take back and forth, you learn more than you do from uh, just a straight presentation. Um, I'll address some of the uh, things that Mike said, but uh, uh, I did have some notes and kind of want to go through a little bit of a timeline here. And uh, one of the, Ronald Reagan's favorite phrases was, uh, the closest thing to immortality on Earth is a temporary government program. And I think we could probably add to that uh, a temporary government tax increase. Yep. And <clears throat> when Jennifer Granholm was running, she said, uh, I won't make you pay more in taxes so that wealthy corporations will pay less. And this, she said, I was just watching a video of it uh, recently, this was her mantra. Uh, then in 2007, Granholm, with the help of a few Republicans, passed a temporary tax increase from 3.9% up to 4.35%. The tax increase was scheduled to roll back in 2015. This was the promise, I was telling you, it was a temporary tax increase. However, the rollback was frozen, unfortunately, by Republicans in 2012 at 4.25%, and that's where it has been ever since. Uh, over the last decade, the state has grown by about $12 billion, far above inflation. Since uh, we took over in 2011, the budget has increased by $6 billion a year. In other words, state budget has been increasing about a billion a year and is projected to continue doing so going forward. This year, uh, a bill was introduced, as we just discussed, uh, to keep that promise that we had made to the taxpayers. And that was to roll back the tax increases. Uh, it was supported by the Speaker and the majority of the caucus. Uh, the bill would have amended the Income Tax Act to decrease and eventually phase out the income tax by 2057. It would have decreased personal income tax to the 3.9% in 18 and incrementally phase out the income tax thereafter by decreasing the rate by one-tenth of one percent per year until it was eliminated in 2057. That didn't get support of the caucus. <clears throat> so back to the drawing board. Uh, to garner support, the House worked together on a substitute that was hoped the caucus could support. The new substitute decreased the income tax to 3.9, again, getting that promise back that we promised back in uh, 2007 when this was passed, uh, and that was to be done over a four-year time period. The first one was initially dropping it down to that 3.9 and getting rid of it over time. This is just getting back to the promise over a four-year time period. It lowered the income tax in the first year to 4.5% uh, in 18, and then that would have created a budget impact of approximately 195 a million dollars in the first year. That cut is smaller than the expected increase in sales tax revenue this year. When the governor's budget for the next year alone was proposed, get this, the proposed increase is $777.5 million more than we spend now. So we're talking about $195 million getting the, making the promise and the governor's 
increases massively higher than that. Uh, the uh, 2010, uh, since 2010, I'm sorry, fee and revenue, uh, tax revenues increased by eight, uh, two, I'm sorry, 5.8 billion or a 23% gain. So this new proposal was to reduce in the first year 0.1%. That's at 195 million. The next year, point uh, one percent, and then we're going to see what happens. So two years, this was this bill was going to achieve those two cuts. After that, it was to achieve another one percent on the third year and a point of well, zero uh, point zero five in the last year. But because there was so much concern, how are we going to have the money to do this? Uh, we, there was a provision put in there that unless the current uh, rainy day fund, which is right around 500 million now, unless we had enough money to pile that up to a billion, the last two years wouldn't even occur. So everything is built into this thing to make darn sure that there's no uh, sky is falling. Uh, we're talking about uh, 195 million over two years of cut. Um, the uh, income tax would then stay at the 3.9% unless triggered by, uh, as Mike mentioned, uh, the original plan would have an automatic income tax reduction if the general fund increased above inflation by 1.425%, uh, um, then there was a, uh, a, a decrease built in. But other than that, we'd be back to the 3.9%. Lowering the personal income tax to 3.9 percent in 18 would fulfill that promise that was busted in 07, and will provide taxpayers with more financial freedom and further stimulate the economy. Lowering the income tax not only gives taxpayers more money in their pocketbooks, it also discourages the growth of government and forces fiscal prioritization. The incremental phase-out still leaves significant revenue in place after the annual reduction. The proposal saves Michigan workers more than $1.1 billion by 2021 and would provide immediate savings of $195 million in the first year. Reducing the income tax by one-tenth of one percent in the first year is smaller than the increase, as I talked about, presented by the governor's budget of $777.5 million. And we're talking about $195 million. What I always hear from the Democrats is, we're proposing a $775 million increase, but we're only going to increase by 700. So we're cutting, or they would say the Republicans, you're cutting the, the you're you're cutting the budget when we're cutting about the increase. Well, they, the governor wants a massive increase. We're talking about a little bit of tax cut here. Um, so. Um, uh, you know, reducing the income tax, uh, well, lowering the rate over a four-year time period, which is what this called for, provides more consistent budgeting and will ensure the schools, roads, and essential services are not impacted. Uh, keeping the roads package uh, income rollback in place after we return to the 3.9, uh, the income tax rate will continue to reduce if our state continues to uh, in improve and thrive. Uh, I do want to mention with that Kansas, uh, I did a little research on that. Uh, that was done in a recession. It was done unevenly as they reduced some uh, uh, income tax, they increased others. That's about a two million population, very rural. Is the, the parallels between Michigan and Kansas are not even there. Uh, one thing I uh, want you to also know in terms of just the overall things that we face in Lansing, what, what do we deal with when we're uh, making these decisions? Uh, whenever the state needs to find bailout money for Detroit, when they need to build a stadium, or give the city of Detroit 60% of optional revenue sharing. They're 8% of the population, they get 60% of revenue sharing. We always find the money. They come calling, we got the money. Um, but when we want to do a slight income tax for the working schlub out there, it's too expensive. Way too expensive. You call it the uh, schlub. Uh, <laughs> I'm a schlub. I want that money too. I want a tax credit. Uh, I believe that uh, uh, this bill was uh, less about concern about the particulars of the bill's impact than about fiscal philosophy. Uh, even this very mo a modest cut, if it passed, it would have been sent to the Senate meat grinder. It would have had to go through a lot more 
downgrading on the cuts. Uh, we had already heard that, that if it even got taken up, it would have been downgraded on the cuts that we proposed. So even this modest cut to achieve the promise to the taxpayers was shot down before it could begin the process of even further getting watered down by the Senate. So I think the, uh, this vote is more about philosophical outlook than the particulars of this specific bill. Uh, I did a little bit of research and, you know, yeah, there, this, we just don't have any money. What if the economy goes down? Uh, the MEDC Corporate Welfare Program is $230 million at a minimum. Oh, yeah. Indian Gaming uh, Compact brought to the MEDC and spent uh, on program $44 million. Bus transit's 170 million running empty buses all over the place. Amtrak's 25 million. <laughs> Higher education is my favorite one. Um, uh, U of M would say we had to we had to slap those uh, tuition increases because uh, we just didn't get enough money. They had 380 million dollars. You know what they they just said they're spending this year on diversity training. Oh. Another 80 million on top of I don't know how many tens of million they're already spent. They must have a diversity trainer for every student now at U of M. It's preposterous. <laughs> this is the kind of money that we're pouring down a rat hole and blaming it on the legislature when U of M is pouring our money down a rat hole, wasting money on diversity training. Uh, if we uh, had higher education, if the other universities received the same amount per student as Oakland here in Michigan. $637 million saved. We're talking about $195 uh, million on this uh, cut over two years uh, that would be assured. Statutory revenue sharing, like I said, 60% goes to the city of Detroit. That amount, $450 million. I'm sure you can all be real certain that was well spent, uh, that annual $450 million. Uh, uh, prevailing wage adds another $250 million uh, in cost. So I really believe that there is the room to do this tax cut. Uh, I am absolutely firmly of the belief this will not uh, savage the budget, savage our future. I think that uh, we absolutely have the ability to do this, and uh, I hope we can pick up the uh, last few votes we need to pass it. Thank you.